Clarksdale, Mississippi, the Delta, the heart of the blues, Highway 49 and 61, the crossroads. This is where Ernest Lane is from, and his house was the epicenter of the blues. His father, John Lane, was a casual piano player, specializing in stride piano, so there was always music in the house. This music attracted other musicians in the area who would come over for informal jam sessions. It just so happened that these musicians were some of the most important and influential blues musicians of our time. People like Little Walter, Sonny Boy Williamson, Robert Nighthawk, and Pine Top Perkins would routinely stop by Lane's house to play. And as this was happening, a young Ernest Lane and his childhood friend, Ike Turner, would watch in awe and amazement. I used to watch my father and Pine Top. They used to sit up there and play that on the piano two or three days, man. Get them a gallon or two of that bootleg, that moonshine. <laughs> And she finally could play that damn piece. My daddy played the other piano too. But he played, you know, like that ragtime stuff. Yeah, that takes me way back. These jam sessions provided plenty of inspiration for these two young men. I want all y'all to know. Lane immediately took to the piano. So I learned how to play first. And then he taught me a few, a few little notes. And boy, I was so happy. I think it was a song called ZZ Zum Zum. ZZ Zum Zum. ZZ Zum Played all night by the light of the moon. <laughs> His first formal gigs were with the great Robert Nighthawk. His association with Nighthawk would prove to be fruitful and would also lead to his first appearance on a hit record, Sweet Black Angel. Me and Robert had a radio show. Every day he came on the air, you know, 11 15, clocks in Mississippi. Well, we were advertising Mother's Best Flower. Sonny Boy name was over there advertising Sonny Boy Mill. Called his show the King Biscuit. That's how I got my first starts playing after I left Robert. I was with Earl Hooker now. Guy from Drew, Mississippi called Kansas City Red. We all used to play with, with Red, and I used to play with, uh, with Robert. So Robert. So Robert, he really taught me how to play the blues. Robert and I did it. All I knew how to do was play what, what was playing on the, on the jukebox. But I don't read no music. His band had some all-star musicians in it. Earl Hooker, and from James Brown fame, the great guitarist Jimmy Nolan. After years of touring, Lane found himself in St. Louis, back with his childhood friend Ike Turner and his band, the Kings of Rhythm. The Kings of Rhythm were the hottest band in St. Louis with a residency at the Club Imperial every week. It was at this club where Lane witnessed the birth of a superstar. A young Annie Mae Bullock performed on a whim with the band one night, electrifying the crowd. Ike immediately saw her potential and formed a new band around her. He also suggested she change her name to Tina. The Ike and Tina Review was born. Lane recorded on all of Ike and Tina's early hits, including Everything Is Gonna Work Out Fine, I Idolize You, and one of their biggest hits ever, A Fool in Love. There's something on my mind. Yeah. Ike, Tina, Lane, and the Kings of Rhythm all relocated to Los Angeles, California. It was here that Lane decided to strike out on his own, forming a new band called Sam and the Good Timers. This band was the hottest in Los Angeles, backing all the major acts that would come through town. One of these acts that happened to see them perform was the pop group The Monkees. 66, and from a group called Good Timers. And we, we pretty much had LA sold up. Me, Sam, Nose, and Terry started the group. So I had a band right there. Started playing with The Monkees back in, in 69. The Monkees immediately recognized the potential of having such a great backing band and used the Good Timers for their hugely successful world tour in 1969. Since that time, Lane has stayed active in recording, with greats like Canned Heat, 
and B.B. King, just to name a few. He has also recorded several albums on his own. Lane's music is as deep as the Mississippi Delta, as rich as the culture he was born into. Ernest Lane, Mr. Goodbar, born with the blues. And he's here to tell you, the blues is back. 